Hello, good evening, and a very warm welcome from the Stand With Us Education Center right here in the heart of Jerusalem. We have an amazing program for you tonight. So without further ado, let's start the first ever Stand With Us UK Gala online. Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Dixon. I'm a Brit born and raised in Mill Hill, and I was Director of Informal Jewish Education at JFS. I've since made Aliyah, and for the last 15 years, I've been the Executive Director of Stand With Us Israel. So I know firsthand the struggles we face in the UK, the need to combat anti-Semitism, and to ensure that our children and grandchildren feel a strong connection to Israel. In a regular year, at this very location, our Stand With Us Education Centre on King David Street, thousands of British youth join us for empowering educational sessions about Israel. With the advent of the pandemic, we continue to touch hearts and minds all over the UK through virtual sessions. Tonight, you'll get a glimpse into that important work. There may be no reception, catering, cocktails, live music or hobnobbing, but we do have a special show for you, including the inspiring stories of our students on the front lines of our community's effort to combat anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Since March, we've been incredibly active in schools, sixth forms, on campus and especially in the community, where we've been inundated with requests for our content. And of course, you'll have the opportunity to help support this vital work. All donations made up to £100,000 will be doubled thanks to kind anonymous donors. This is the time of year when we raise the vast majority of funds that we need to continue our work. So we ask that you'll consider joining us as we support the young people of Stand With Us UK. You can make a donation by clicking on the donate button at any point during tonight's gala. Now here's a quick look at what Stand With Us has been doing. <laughs> Over the last 10 years, Stand With Us UK has seen huge growth, but nothing as fast as during 2020. While the whole world has been battling COVID-19, we at Stand With Us have been tackling the ancient and rampant virus of anti-Semitism. Only 11 months ago, the Jewish and pro-Israel community heaved a sigh of relief after the 2019 general election. But the problem is far from over with nearly two-thirds of under-30s having voted for an anti-Semitic party leadership that openly supported BDS and the destruction of the Jewish state. The need for Israel education and educators is stronger than ever. Stand With Us believes that by inspiring and training articulate students to become Israel ambassadors among their peers, we can encourage the wider community to stand up to anti-Semitism and make a positive case for Israel. And here's how we do it. With our Emerson Fellowship Programme, we select the most promising Jewish and non-Jewish students from campuses across the UK. This year, dozens of student leaders from diverse ethnic, religious and political backgrounds have joined our prestigious year-long public diplomacy programme. Our students are trained by experts to stand strong in the face of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel rhetoric to become future leaders of the community. Lockdown has already seen students at JFS and Yavna College being inspired via our tailored Zoom sessions, with more scheduled this term at a number of schools. Stand With Us has a regular presence on UK campuses, hosting events and taking part in debates organised by JSOX and other societies. We are the respected practical resource for students wanting to counter a BDS voice. In response to Israel Apartheid Week, Peace Week UK, a Stand With Us initiative, is a nationwide campaign in over 40 campuses, reaching over 1,500 students a year. Through panels, debates, diverse speakers and workshops, we promote Israeli culture, coexistence and tolerance, while this year's approach to Peace Week is to reach thousands more students online. At Stand With Us, we pride ourselves in our rapid response to anti-Israel campus activities. We have stopped BDS founder Omar Barghouti from appearing on a panel at Cambridge University, lobbied the Vice-Chancellor at King's College London to overturn a decision barring an Israeli delegation from the college and eventually adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. 
delivering training for lecturers and universities to understand and adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. We are the students' first responders. Last term, we successfully assisted Leia with a highly sensitive situation impacting her university experience. I wrote an invitation on my class group at City University of London inviting students to join a hummus making event run by the Israel Society. Following this invitation, I received many personal abuses, including disturbing images. I no longer felt so if going into university or attending any of my classes. I decided to contact Stand With Us. Stand With Us connected me to a lawyer and together we managed to get all those students a warning and if they do anything of the sort again, they will be thrown out of university. Sadly, her story is just one of hundreds of anti-Semitic incidents directly affecting students' lives. With so many communities reaching out to their base on Zoom, we have never been more relevant or in demand. Experts on three continents are ready to inspire and educate whatever the time zone or lockdown restriction in place. Jerusalem Live are tours delivered live and direct from the field. Over 1,600 people during the COVID summer have toured the streets of Jerusalem, with new destinations in the pipeline, even including a tour that gets up close to the security barrier. Stand With Us ensures that Israel remains palpable and accessible to everyone. In COVID times, Stand With Us's reach has extended enormously. Stand With Us Connect delivered two live shows a week with guests including the late Rabbi Lord Sachs, Mark Regev and Colonel Richard Kemp, while Stand With Us TV, available 24 hours a day and our ever-increasing social media platforms, are reaching hundreds of thousands of followers. Mobilising our growing alumni to support Israel and stand up to anti-Semitism. Every organisation needs good leadership to ensure we constantly innovate and keep growing. Our team of directors, trustees and students ensure that we never rest on our laurels and remain among the grassroots advocates. At Stand With Us UK, we have achieved tremendous growth in our first 10 years. Imagine what we can achieve in the next 10. Stand With Us UK gave me the tools and the ability to passionately and effectively stand up for myself, Israel and the Jewish people, not just on campus, but now through my personal and professional life. Thank you to you, the Stand With Us UK family and community for your generosity and support tonight and into the future. Hi, I'm Loretta Cash, Chair of Stand With Us UK. Welcome and thank you for being with us this evening. And a sincere thank you to our untiring team, our board members and gala committee. Two years ago at our gala dinner, the Stand With Us family and guests, including many of you, honored Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs as our Beacon of Light Award recipient. That night, Rabbi Sachs spoke his familiar soothing words of peace, reminding us of our duty to stand up for Israel and against anti-Semitism. Earlier this year, Rabbi Sachs recorded a personal message for Stand With Us students attending our international conference. We would like to share with you his words, which embody the Stand With Us ethos. Rabbi Sachs, born in the same year as the Jewish state, remains a beacon of light to all faiths as his loss reverberates around the world. The work of Stand With Us is outstanding. It is one of the great Jewish organizations of our time. Sadly, anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism are with us as recent events continually remind us. In fact, they're not even two separate things. I've said often that anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism, because in the Middle Ages, Jews were hated because of their faith in the 19th and 20th centuries because of their race and today because of their nation state. It's the same hate, but mutated every single phase of our history. Israel is the only one of the 193 nation states that are members of the United Nations to have its right to exist 
regularly called into question. The truth is, the Jewish connection with the land of Israel goes back longer than any nation's connection with any land in the history of the West. It goes back in promise to the days of Abraham, in reality to the days of Joshua. Well over 3,000 years ago, Jews never left the land voluntarily, nor will we ever do so in the future, because it is our home. The only place in all of history where we were able to do what every other nation takes for granted, namely to construct a society according to our own highest ideals. You now are all Shagrire Medinat Israel, Israel's ambassadors to the world, and the work you have to do is vital. So I salute you, I congratulate you, and I wish you every success in all you do. May you succeed in changing minds. May you succeed in opening hearts. May you succeed in winning friends. And may all you do be blessed. Have you got five minutes to talk about Israel's ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians? And for example, did you know that Israel is actually an apartheid state? Wow, I never knew this. Is this true? Actually, this is a complete distortion of what's happening in the Middle East. I'll explain. And that's why the work of Stand With Us is so important, to prepare our students for the coming year on campus. So many have recognized how important this mission is, and we were thrilled to receive this message we're proud to work very closely with Stand With Us. They are a game changer, not only in the way they allow us to connect with Israel and for our students to connect with Israel, but as importantly, the work they do with our six formers and preparing them for the world beyond JFS. Our students are always very enthusiastic when they know they will be working with the outstanding educators of Stand With Us, whether that be online or on site. The work of Stand With Us is invaluable. Without their experience, without their expertise, and without their enthusiasm, we simply wouldn't be able to deliver the high quality Israel education that we all aspire to. The truth is, the work of Stand With Us simply cannot happen without your support. So whatever it is that you can give, perhaps even you can give that little bit more, I know that Stand With Us, JFS, and our students will greatly appreciate it. Thank you. 
I grew up in northwest London and I led a very comfortable Jewish life. I was raised Catholic, I'm not from a Jewish background. I grew up in a very liberal household. I am a proud LGBT Jew and my grandmother is from Israel. I was brought up in a West typical West African household, Christian upbringing, and we were taught to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. By the time I entered university, doing a politics and international relations degree, I thought I knew it all. Um, how wrong was I? I was walking to university just a normal day and there was a big protest going on outside the student union. Um, I couldn't really understand what was being said or anything. It was just a lot of shouting, a lot of crowds. And then as I got closer, I started to hear two, four, six, eight, Israel is a terrorist state. Well, I've had people shout at me that Israel is an apartheid state. Um, you have people come up to you and just say complete negative lies about Israel. One of the professors had on his presentation that Israel was taking part in ethnic cleansing. And all of the students, you know, every single person was there jotting it down and copying it down, taking it as fact. Outside, the socialist worker handed out papers that said Zionism is a racist endeavour. And I was outnumbered and I was outflanked at university. And everyone at my campus knows everyone. Um, so it's a very personal thing when you're getting these negative con uh, comments about Israel. The Jewish Israeli Society, of which I was president, hosted uh, a talk delivered by the former Lieutenant Colonel of the IDF, uh, A.L. Jaw. A group of students, um, over a hundred of them, attempted to prevent the talk from happening with a physical aggressive protest. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on Most you. recently we had uh, a motion proposed um, by a group of students to adopt uh, BDS. It was going to make it more difficult to, or almost impossible to have speakers come from Israel to uh, get kosher food that we need for Friday night dinners. I was hosting a summer trip for international students from around the world. The Brazilian Jewish kids were receiving swastikas being sent to them by airdrop from other students, including the Turkish students on the bus. And as if that wasn't bad enough, when we tried to speak to the adults, the teachers who were supposed to be the responsible ones, they said, oh, well, no, it's just Israel. Um, it's only Israel. Israel, there's a reason why they're doing this. So we won't be as harsh with our kids doing this bullying, doing this nasty behavior, doing this anti-Semitic behavior because it's Israel. So, so why would we bother? And that was for me the, when I realized that we couldn't sit back and say, oh, it's not my fight to fight or it's not my issue to care about. As awful as it sounds, I would be able to get through to people a bit easier than Jewish people might be able to because of the assumption that they're just going to be biased. It's everybody's issue because racism is something that we have to root out of society everywhere we find it. So where Stand With Us has been extremely helpful from my personal experience is providing that support behind the scenes um, to students like myself to allow us to fight those fights that need to be fought on campus. The Emerson Fellowship really taught me the skills necessary to combat anti-Semitism. It taught me leadership skills, it taught me essential public speaking skills, and it also taught me bridge building. And the Stand With Us were there to give us resources from literature to funding. If there was ever anything negative, um, Stand With Us would be there straight away at the phone call or they'd be there on campus to help us. The work that I and fellow Jewish and pro-Israel students do on campus would not be possible without the incredible support that I and others have received from Stand With Us. Um, at a Stand With Us training conference, I met Charlotte Korchak. Charlotte Korchak. Charlotte Korchak. Charlotte Korchak is one of the most dynamic and passionate speakers I ever heard talk about Israel, the Israeli people, and anti-Semitism. I love teaching history and teaching about what actually went down on the ground, what has happened in Israel, what is going on with the Palestinians. And I really genuinely try to give my students that knowledge, those facts, that story, and the narratives of both sides. Students are constantly telling me how much they just want more information. They want more resources, more ability to learn and to understand. And that's really what Stand With Us is there to provide. You know, in the last eight months during these crazy corona times that we're in, Stand With Us really pivoted and became incredibly innovative in how we deliver our message to students for them to better understand what actually happened and also give them the tools to be able to effectively communicate that to other people. So it's not just about knowing the information, it's also about knowing how to convey the information in an effective way. And that's what I see happening on campuses across the United Kingdom. It's not just preaching to the choir, you know, people who 
don't know anything about Israel are going to be able to understand the truth about Israel. Please donate because without Stand With Us's work, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to be one of the voices that can use their name, their really respected brand, to try and do my little bit here in my corner of the world, um, to do something about anti-Semitism on my campus and work further afield. The work that I and fellow Jewish and pro-Israel students do on campus would not be possible without the incredible support that I and others have received from Stand With Us. Please be reassured that the resources that you could help provide will go a long way to combat misinformation and anti-Zionist narratives at university and help protect Jewish students from the vitriol and bullying that is so omnipresent at university. Hello, I'm Sarah Sherrard. As a longtime supporter of Stand With Us, I have been to previous galas, listened to speakers talk of the need and the work of Stand With Us. I identified with it and donated. But now, as Executive Director, I see the enormous challenges we face. The anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment out there is relentless. And in this new COVID constantly online world, the challenge and need has never been greater. And I am here to ask you for your support. As part of the generation for whom Israel is in our DNA, I vividly remember the spring of 1973 in celebrating 25 years of Israel's independence. That summer, my parents took me to Israel for the first time. I remember rows of tanks and the constant sound of the sonic boom from planes patrolling overhead. Only four weeks later, I was in the synagogue on Yom Kippur when they announced the outbreak of yet another war. I will never forget the heartbreaking sound of the congregation sobbing as they learned yet again Israel was under attack. Growing up in a Zionist home like many of my generation and by attending a Jewish primary school and being encircled by a community who understood the importance of a Jewish state, my Zionism developed organically and has led me to where I am today. Unfortunately, in this generation, becoming a Zionist is no longer an organic process. Today, young people tend to have strong opinions without necessarily having the knowledge to back it up. In an age where fake news is a troubling phenomenon, where young people absorb the majority of their information from social media, and where there is no accountability for spreading lies, it's easy to see why there is so much ignorance surrounding the discourse and reality of Israel. The rise in anti-Semitism is extremely alarming. Here in the UK, the media, the anti-Semitic stain in politics and the BDS movement are distorting and confusing issues that surround Israel, making it increasingly difficult for young British Jews to navigate. Many switch off. For those students brave and strong enough to take a stand, the problem is tangible. At Birmingham University, my daughter witnessed swastikas scratched into cars and spread on a pizza order. At Drama College, my youngest experienced constant, passive, ignorant anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. When anti-Israel rhetoric so easily meshes into anti-Semitic messages and comments, it's clear that it is time to step in and stand up. This is neither legitimate nor constructive criticism of Jews or their state. It is delegitimization and anti-Semitism. Students in this country are arriving at university ill-equipped to deal with these problems. Jewish schools may infuse about Israel, but they fail to teach the facts and the reality on the ground. At non-Jewish schools, anti-Israel sentiment is allowed to fester, and at universities, professors themselves fuel a narrative that encourages anti-Israel rhetoric. Stand With Us UK is the leading organisation in schools and on campus dedicated to educating about Israel. Since COVID, our workload has increased significantly. We are a small, extremely hardworking team, but we need an army. We need the funding for more educators and for more programs in more schools and universities so that we can educate the Jewish and non-Jewish community at large and arm young people with facts to allow them to come to their own educated opinions. Please use the donate button on the Gala webpage and donate generously to help us counter the lies and mistruths while ensuring that the Jewish people and the Jewish state remains relevant to our children and our grandchildren, thereby guaranteeing that the next generation of leaders will emerge educated, passionate and able to stand strong for Israel.
Thanks to our generous sponsors, all donations will be doubled up to £100,000. As hate rises around us, funds are so desperately needed to enable us to reach more students, deliver a successful campaign to urge universities to adopt the IHRA definition, run an effective Peace Week campaign, implement more interfaith courses in non-Jewish schools and combat the rising narrative that is so detrimental to the future of British Jewry and the generations to come. Please click that donate button and stand with us. Each year, the Stand With Us UK Beacon of Light Award is presented to individuals who refuse to accept the status quo, who go above and beyond in the fight against anti-Semitism. They're people who make a difference and they deserve recognition for their outspoken stand. Here are some of our previous honorees. And so to this year's award winner, our 2020 Stand With Us UK Beacon of Light honoree is a writer, broadcaster, and a liberal Muslim activist. He's co-founder and chairman of the counter-extremism organization Quilliam, and a leading voice for reason and tolerance. A former extremist himself, he spent time in an Egyptian prison and authored the book Radical about his personal journey. And of course you know him from his searingly outspoken and brave rebukes of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism on LBC. Hating Jews is something that those on the far left advocate, those on the far right advocate, and the Islamist theocrats themselves also advocate. There are people in this country that will, uh, till their last breath, make sure that we never uh, sink down that uh, cesspit of despair and division uh, 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 that is anti-Semitism. Because for me, that's the canary in the coal mine. So what's the Western's possibility of backing Israel? To no, but we're not talking about Israel today, Palestine. Shabir. We're talking about it Soleimani. Shabir, so stop this. You know, this is what this is what's about tree, right? We're not talking about Israel today. Why does everything... You know, it's like, why did you have to drag Israel into this conversation? Israel wasn't in... This, we're talking about Iran and Syria and Iraq and America. Majid, Israel Majid, stayed out of this war, Majid, Shabir. Give me, give me two minutes, okay? What I'm trying to get to it's so, okay? It's no, Shabir, it's such a cliche for a Muslim to drag Israel into every debate. Listen to yourself. Well, then you wonder why people think you're anti-Semitic. And I often okay. say, Bill, I say you don't have to be black to challenge racism. You don't have to be gay to challenge homophobia. Right. And you don't have to be Muslim to challenge Islamist theocracy. I need you here more. Majid Nawaz, thank you very much, sir. Majid Nawaz, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you for joining Stand With Us. It is our honor to honor you. A pleasure, thank you. I'm, I'm absolutely honored to be here. Now tell me, it's quite the journey for someone to go from being part of the radical Islamist group, his book, Tahrir, to joining us today at Stand With Us, which openly and strongly supports Israel. And you've powerfully detailed that in your book, Radical. Could you, what would the Majid of today say to the teenage Majid who supported Jihad? <laughs> <I would, laughs> what a great question. That's a good opening question, Michael. I would have said, um, wait until your hair goes gray and then take some good advice from an older version of you. Um, the, the thing is, uh, I, I, uh, part of what's happened to me is understanding just how one-sided a narrative I had been raised and how honestly, and I don't mean this in any bad way to my fellow Muslims, but how one side of the narrative is that we are all as Muslims raised with in Muslim majority contexts. Uh, we receive an effect from a young school age onwards, what I would now call propaganda about uh, Israel. And why I use the word propaganda is because for me, anything that relentlessly focuses on one narrative without considering the other side is lacking in human empathy. There are very, very few subjects on, uh, on this planet where that is an acceptable actually a desirable form of behavior. One of them is for those who try to obfuscate or justify genocide. Then you don't want to know the other side once, of course, we know a genocide is going on. But with most conflicts in the world outside of those that are 
gross violations against humanity, um, crimes against humanity, outside of those that are, you know, genocidal, uh, there is always two narratives to the story. So uh, one of the things I benefited from uh, is uh, the adult me having after first question the Islamist ideology that I adopted at 16, um, I learned the benefits of critical thinking from that self-improvement. And so I thought to myself, why stop here? So I continued questioning. And part of that was that in a previous incarnation, I was a Liberal Democrat parliamentary candidate here in London, uh, in Hampstead and Kilburn in the 2015 elections. I'm no longer a member of that party. Um, however, at the time I was, and I went on a House of Lords delegation to Israel. And I learned, it was my first ever trip inside Israel proper. And I learned on that visit um, actually, that are uh, that, uh, just how one-sided my view had been. I saw mosques on the beaches of Tel Aviv with the azan playing outside from the, mount, uh, from the microphones. That's more than you have in Britain. I saw Muslim women in a full hijab on the Tel Aviv beach. Uh, I learned that 20% of Israel is Arab and they have Israeli passports, just like I am a Pakistani British Muslim with a British passport. So um, then I learned, okay, that means there's an Israeli minority who are Muslim. The majority of that 20% are Muslim. I learned they had representation in parliament. And at the time in 2015, uh, when I look back to Britain, our politics wasn't as diverse as the Israeli governments when I saw all of those things. So uh, that began a long, long journey. It's a longer story, but I'm summarizing it for you. I met with survivors of terrorism in Israel as well. It began a long journey, uh, which I'll explain with, with I think, basic, one basic word, really, I, I, which I would encourage um, everybody to adopt, and that's intellectual honesty. And I just think in this day and age, especially with the rise of populism everywhere, we're lacking, me first and foremost, uh, intellectual honesty. We have to be honest with ourselves and then we can be honest with other people. And of course, as a young man, you ended up in prison. Instead of turning you more radical, it made you less so. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I, uh, psychologists could elaborate on that. I can't diagnose myself, but uh, I don't know why, you know, most of the people that were with me became more extreme, especially if they witnessed torture in Egypt's dungeons. It's usually a recipe to make one even more extreme. Hizb al-Tahrir, as you know, um, it remains legal across the West. It's an extremist organization, but never advocates as an organization terrorism as a means to estab establish their so-called caliphate. But those in jail with us through torture uh, went on the same journey that Sayyid Qutb. Um, went on, which is he was a member of the Brotherhood, he was tortured in Egypt's dungeons, ended up, you know, being a leading godfather of modern day jihadism, uh, the leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman Zawahiri, was inspired by him. He was also in the same jail cells that I was held in. Uh, a lot of the Muslim Brotherhood in those uh, jail cells, I was there with the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Dr. Muhammad Badir, and other leadership members, Assam Aryan, the spokesperson and others. Um, those in their history that went through torture became more jihadist, not less. Um, so I don't know what the difference was with me, apart from I will say one thing, and that is that my uh, my mother had always from a young age as a liberal Pakistani Muslim feminist woman who'd always resisted uh, the traditional dogma uh, that the fundamentalists had tried to impose uh, upon her. Uh, and I think partly because like many uh, British Pakistani, she was uh, of that generation. She was in an arranged marriage with my father. Uh, she got to university. She was pulled out by my grandfather uh, in order to marry uh, my father. So she wasn't given the opportunity for critical thought and education in that way herself. So she always inculcated that in me as a child. So with me in jail, I had spare time on my hands. I was there for my studies in Egypt anyway. So I thought, why not continue my studies? So I began reading all the English classics. Um, I continued my Arabic language studies. Uh, I read politics religiously as well. But because my master's was in political theory at the LSE, I was always interested in political ideology. So I did a deep dive into communism, Islamism, uh, capitalism. And so I had a university of political debate with the who's who of political prisoners. And it helped me open my mind up. I became emotionally close to many of them. So I humanized everyone from uh, jihadis on the one end to people that had um, uh, become Christian from having been Egyptian Muslims became Christian. And Mubarak would throw everyone in jail. I mean, we had a joke in, in Egypt, and that was if you change your mind in Egypt, if you become a non-Muslim or to, to becoming a Muslim, or you leave Islam and become a Christian, whatever, whichever way you change your mind, Mubarak will throw you in jail, because the main thing he, he wanted was not for you not to think. Uh, so <laughs> it was a really interesting conversation and experience over the course of the four years. I decided I wanted to benefit from that rather than uh, let it get me down. And I hope I did. I mean, the education for me was life changing. Well, not only did you benefit, but you helped many people benefit as a result. Um, moving on to your leadership in the face of anti-Semitism. Election night 2019, Jeremy Corbyn loses. Uh, when we reflect on this recent history, 
do you think we dodged a bullet and that uh, that's done? Or do you think we could see a similar pattern emerge again? Oh, um, never, ever assume it won't happen again. One thing I've learned from my work, and I forgive me for preaching to the choir here, and of course the Jewish community's own experience in this is tragic. But I thought after Bosnia, uh, that uh, genocide would never happen again. And then, of course, we know recent history and we know what happened in Rwanda, in Kosovo. We know what happened, well, what was stopped in Kosovo, but we know what's happening right now with the Uyghur Muslims in China, uh, with up to two million Muslims interned there. And so what, one thing I've learned is, and I'll break this down into two points as advice I give um, to uh, our Jewish brethren and cousins as well. And that is advice that I believe they already know and understand, but it's worth repeating just for all of us. And that is never, ever take our human rights or freedoms or civil liberties for granted. Uh, you can have the most beautiful words coming from people that pretend or even actually genuinely may believe in those words, um, but they don't. You, people are so fickle and it's unbelievable how quickly this all breaks down. Um, and it's not their fault. Uh, you can't expect people to be experts on every topic. Um, and so what I found was rising across Europe was what I call a triple threat. The triple threat of the far left dogma, you've mentioned Corbyn, uh, for him to have become the leader of Her Majesty's opposition in Britain and to come so close yet so far eventually with the election night, thank, thank God. But up until then, we all remember how close it looked because of Brexit and all the other stuff that was going on. You've got the far left uh, seizing institutions, uh, <clears throat> uh, infiltrating civil society with their dogma, um, as they did with the Labour Party, that hasn't stopped. It's continuing. Then I mentioned the triple threat. You've got the far right in Germany. Uh, their version of the SAS was an elite military unit, was disbanded. That's the German version of the SAS. Disbanded, as reported in the London Times, because it was overrun by neo-Nazi militants. Um, and then, of course, I don't need to mention uh, the uh, jihadist threat. Um, and we all saw what happened with the summer of terror in Europe, the Bataclan and elsewhere. And one thing that all these three have in common, I call the triple threat, one thing they all have in common, they hate each other. The jihadists hate the far right, the far right hate the far left, the far left hate the far right, and sometimes hate the jihadists too, depending on where the battle is. If it's in Syria, they hate the jihadists. If it's in London, they love them. If it's in Israel, they love them. If in Syria, they hate them. One thing they all have in common is the hatred for Jews. And that's why it's really, really, really important that we never uh, take our civil liberties for granted. As far as I'm concerned, in my life experience, after everything I've been through in life, uh, there is one community that has a sensitivity to an abuse in human rights and genocide and uh, civil liberties being eroded uh, in the way that I do. The closest community I've found in my life experience that has supported me and my work the most has been the Jewish community. Uh, so I know I'm preaching to the choir, but we've got to always remember whether it's a friend on the left wing or the right wing, never take their support for granted and always hold their feet to the metaphoric fire. Uh, because as we saw with Corbyn, it can suddenly come around and hit us without us, blindside us, without us even realizing as the Uyghur genocide blindsided so many people as well. And so important that we continue to speak out and act out against the Uyghur genocide as you uh, have. And of course, no one was more public uh, speaking out against anti-Semitism during that time, the anti-Semitism in Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party than you. Um, you hosted people who uh, spoke about leaving the country if Corbyn were to win. You hosted many debates about this. Did you feel you were making headway during that time? Do you feel you were able to educate people about the dangers of anti-Semitism? Uh well, I, I mean, now in hindsight, I must have done because I'm here talking to you. But at the time, I can assure you, uh, I was, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you, I, I don't want to diagnose myself. I haven't seen a doctor, but I genuinely believe I was depressed. Um, I, I honestly, I, I felt that I wasn't, I felt I was um, shouting in, uh, in the wind, uh, that I, it was an uphill battle that I wasn't being heard. Um, and so, it, you know, I just, what I do, the way I am is when that happens, it just brings me uh, to life, I basically decided I was going to keep going and, and and just it just makes me really stubborn if I know that what I'm saying is the right thing, you know. And it's no, there's no doubt here. I know that what Mr. Corbyn uh, represented uh, in his version of politics was an existential threat, not just to Jews in Britain but across Europe. And I know how our Jewish uh, cousins and our brethren in France were fleeing that country in fear because of the triple threat that I just mentioned. So I was feeling very sad because part of the problem is it never stops. With the Jewish community. It begins with the Jewish community. So if we hadn't nipped it in the bud right there, 
what I was really becoming depressed about is I know where that can end. Um, and we know that even if you go back to the Holocaust, and I'm not advocating here in any way that Mr. Corbyn is a fan of the Holocaust, of course not. But I'm saying that if you take this uh, triple threat poison to its extreme and, and look at the Holocaust, it, it, the Jewish community were targeted, but we know there were homosexuals that were then thrown in there. We know Nazi, uh, the Nazis went after the Roma community as well. Uh, we know it doesn't stop there. And so that was one of the things that was making me so, so depressed. Um, and uh, I was honestly genuinely surprised by the scale of uh, the victory, or in this case, actually more correctly, I should say, the scale of the defeat uh, that Mr. Corbyn faced on the on election night. But the wonderful thing and what was so relieving about it is imagine the message that sends not just to the rest of the world um, and the Jewish community in Israel, but also uh, to these people in Britain. Uh, this country, and one of the things I used to say on air, uh, we have never bowed to fascism. That's one thing about this country uh, that is unique, the United Kingdom. We have never succumbed to fascism. Uh, in fact, we were always at the forefront of defeating it. And that message on election night was re, uh, reasserted to, to the nation. Majid, how did you react when you heard about the peace agreements between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain? It's amazing news. Um, and it's so good. Uh, I, I, well, I wrote in the, three years ago, 2017, the Times of Israel published a blog that I wrote saying that the road to peace goes, goes through Mecca. And I was um, advocating for this regional peace um, as a way to kickstart the peace negotiations. It's fantastic. Uh, one of the things that really disheartens me, though, is I look around and I realize that those people who don't understand the Middle East haven't just realized what's happened. They literally haven't realized that, you know, you've just had a groundbreaking shift uh, that has just happened in the region uh, that, that's good for everybody. It's good for peace. It's good for trade. Um, it's good for even what I care about, Islamic reform. It's fantastic because it, it kickstarts the conversation. Now you'll see those Islamic scholars in the UAE now advocating religiously for peace with Israel. I've already watched their videos. Um, you, you know, your, your viewers need to understand the soft power impact that has. Uh, it, it, me, a British Pakistani Muslim, albeit grey, that happened in jail, I'm still only 42 years old. I can't influence the Arab world the way that those sheikhs can, those religious scholars. They speak fluent Arabic, they speak Quranic Arabic, and I've watched their videos now They're in the UAE, Soon, inshallah, they'll be in Saudi Arabia on their pulpits, advocating using Quranic passages, calling for peace with Israel. And that's what I predict will happen in our lifetimes. Amazing times. Um, let's hope it's soon. We have many non-Jewish supporters of Stand With Us, including young Muslims, by the way, who join Stand With Us to help fight anti-Semitism because they don't see anything contradictory between who they are and their beliefs and their values and supporting Israel. So what's your message to similar teens, young people who are thinking of stepping forward uh, in some way, but might be worried or intimidated? Okay, um, I, I wanna especially uh, make this message for your Muslim supporters. Uh, they are the ambassadors for the future. Already they've seen the UAE, uh, Bahrain. Uh, they're going to see in our lifetime, I believe, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, make peace with Israel. Get ahead of that curve and be the ambassadors for that phenomenon. Um, remember, you know, when people, those ignorant people address you for more war and more conflict, remember the words of God who says, that if the ignorant address them, they say peace. That is what we stand for. That is what we believe. At the end of the day, the UAE has led the way, but all of your Muslim supporters can also be ambassadors for the future. Um, they, they should remember in their conversations with other young people, it's not Israel that destroyed Syria, and it's not Israel uh, that destroyed Pakistan or Afghanistan or Iraq, uh, these countries, Yemen, right? They're all in civil war. Libya, they're all in civil war. If you look at them, it's not Israel that's going, going around killing uh, Muslims in these countries. And so those Muslim supporters you have, uh, they need to understand that actually they've been hoodwinked. Uh, that the real whataboutery, when I, when I talk about people pointing over there for a distraction, the real uh, whataboutery of the distraction is, is people that say, look at Israel, when it's not Israel uh, that supported Assad using chemical weapons against his own population. So actually, those people who were uh, attacking uh, Israel were at the same time supporting Assad in Syria against his own population. And so I think this is a moment where people can wake up and realize Israel hasn't been the enemy of the Arab people. It's been Arab dictators backed in certain cases by Putin, in other cases by China. Uh, these dictatorships have a vested interest in maintaining dict dictatorial tyranny in the Middle East. And so that's what I'd ask all of your Muslim supporters uh, to, to remember. Majid, uh, I'm, I'm sure we could talk forever 
about all of these topics and I hope we can only continue the conversation. But now comes the ceremonial part because in ordinary times, we would be standing in front of a glittering audience and doing this. Um, but instead we're doing it like this. We know these aren't ordinary times. Uh, but in honor of your outstanding support to the Jewish community and appreciation of your tireless fight against extremism and with thanks for your appreciation of the state of Israel and all of your efforts to build bridges uh, so that we can all experience a more peaceful future. It's my pleasure to present to you on behalf of the Stand With Us UK board, staff, supporters and volunteers, the Stand With Us Beacon of Light Award. And we've found a way to get it to you. In fact, if you just look just next to you, you will find Thank it right there. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I you. wonder if it's very much deserved. Um, you are a hero to all of us. Do you have any final message to our diverse and wonderful students and supporters of Stand With Us who are watching right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm very embarrassed accepting this. Uh, there, there are two reasons I've accepted it. One is because in accepting it, I get the opportunity to thank my mother um, because without her instruction and of course my father, he's very important. Um, uh, but without my mother's particular way of uh, encouraging humanism within me, I don't think I would have got this. Um, and the second reason, actually, uh, that I chose to accept it, as I said to my wife the other day, uh, that I've only ever had awards from minority communities. Um, I've had an award here in London for challenging homophobia as a Muslim. I've had an award from Jewish News for challenging anti-Semitism. Um, and so I, I don't feel, I said to her, these were my precise words, I said, it's not embarrassing if a minority community in need of your help gives you an award. I said it's embarrassing if I start getting awards from mainstream society because then I might be doing something wrong. So uh, as long as the Jewish community or any other minority community keeps giving me awards, I'll accept them because that means I'm fighting for the underdog and not for the overlord. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. You certainly are. Thank you for being an amazing ally and a hero to all of us. I can, I can envisage and perhaps even see all the people standing up uh, in applause, giving you a standing ovation right now uh, alongside <laughs> me. So thank you very, very much, Majid, for all that you do and for all that you represent in our world. We appreciate it very, very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Roz Rothstein, CEO and co-founder of this great organization that now has offices and programs on five continents. We are so proud that Stand With Us has its own office in the UK. 19 years ago, there was no stand with us. And slowly over the years, we opened where we were needed most and we recognized the need in Britain and your work that is so important. As a daughter of Holocaust survivors who lost 80 members of my family, I join you in remembering very well what hateful words can lead to. We must forever be diligent in combating hate and not tolerating it, in educating against it and in exposing it. So combating anti-Semitism in Britain, such a deeply challenging place is of the utmost importance. And building excitement and support for Israel, our ancestral homeland, a place of pride and refuge for the Jewish people is of the utmost importance. The UK team is small, but has a huge impact in the Jewish and non-Jewish schools, in universities, and even in parliament, educating and making a difference. We are proud of our work in Stand With Us UK, of our leadership, our team, and the board, as well as our wonderful students and volunteers from every part of Britain. Thank you for your critical support of Stand With Us in the UK. It is you on the ground and the local community who are ensuring the future of this office and its wonderful, much needed work, educating your children, your grandchildren, and your communities. Thank you. Tonight, we heard powerful testimony from students and we heard inspiring words from Majid Nawaz. The focus is now on us. As you heard from our executive director, Sarah Sherrard, Stand With Us UK is filling a gap that no one else is. We're going into schools and universities. We're inspiring the next generation. You've met the team, the students, and the people that make us special. And the people that you've heard from represent the community that we support. We're proud to be first responders on campus, schools, and in the community. In addition to supporting us tonight, please be in touch and share our information with your colleagues and friends. We'd be delighted to speak and educate your circles and to work together to counter misinformation. 
Thank you for joining us and thank you for your generous support of Stand With Us UK. Stay healthy and safe and we'll see you in person next year. From me in Jerusalem, Shalom.